here to celebrate the opening of Chagall and the Russian avant-garde masterpieces from the collection of the Centre Pompidou Paris. You'll see in a moment there are 118 works in the exhibition by 20 artists, and it truly is an extraordinary exhibition that puts the work of a great 20th century artist, Marc Chagall, in the context of his homeland, Russia, and his adopted country, France. The main idea of the show, uh, Chagall was not an artist living in complete isolation from his peers. But he was quite close to the first movement, which is called neo-primitivism, which is, uh, is, uh, was invented by Goncharova and Labunov. So he took part in the same exhibition at that time. The exhibition you'll see is divided into five different themes in search of roots, artistic advantages in Paris and Russia, return to Russia, art and revolution, and Chagall's world of theater and circus. So it is a thematically based exhibition that takes you through different interests of Chagall at different moments in his life. I think one of the, the truly impressive aspects of the show is not only the, the iconic Chagall paintings that you'll see in the exhibition, but also really significant works by figures like Kandinsky and uh, a range of work by other um, important artists of the early years of the century, Goncharova, Larionov, and others that, that uh, Matthew mentioned in his introduction. So all the Chagall works you see in the show are from per, uh, Chagall personal collection. So he kept the works during his life uh, and so I think and the same is, is true for the Kandinsky. The when Kandinsky came directly from the studio of Kandinsky. As a curator, how do you think about that choreography of a, of a display? Well, I, I think that, that in the case of presenting the show at HEO, we acknowledged that um, our space here was very different. And of course, I think you, know, you have to really start with, with to take the spatial factors into consideration. Um, I had uh, seen the show in Grenoble, and the spaces there were, of course, very different. So it gave us a great sort of starting point, but then, uh, but then to begin thinking about, okay, well, how can, what sort of um, path do we want to lead our visitors on? How do we maximize the potential of our more generous spaces in the Zacks Pavilion? And uh, also, of course, considerations about audience. You talk about um, Chagall thinking of himself as very Russian, which he is. But in the end, he and a lot of other artists go to Paris. So what was it about Paris that was appealing? Why did they want to go, and why were so many of them living together in Paris? Paris was, at that time, so before uh, World War I, it was really the, the capital of art. There was, they were coming from everywhere, the, the, the artists, not only from Russia, but from, from, from Italy, from Spain, and even America, <coughs> a little bit later in the 20s, but that was, uh, that, uh, Paris was uh, the place, the home place for the for all this uh, invention uh, in, in art. It's really a revolution and at the beginning of the 20th century with a way to 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 have a new style with color. Colorful, the color becomes uh, becomes and has a meaning now, like in full focus in painting, like cubism painting. That happened. All this happened in Paris. Uh, and I also want to call your attention to a companion exhibition that we uh, are presenting on our main floor, titled Constructing Utopia, Books and Posters from Revolutionary Russia. And this exhibition is drawn from our holdings of our library and archives and our prints and drawings department. 